Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today, for my CC students, this will be cycle one, week three, science. And that just means for everybody else that we're going to be talking about the parts of an animal cell. Before we dive into that, be sure to go over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. This year we have a new workbook that um, is tailored to go along with each of these episodes. And I really think it will be beneficial for your student to work through that workbook as we progress through these videos throughout the year. So again, that's doodlingthrougheducation.com. So without further ado, let's start doodling. This week, we're jumping into talking about some parts of an animal cell. But before we do that, we really need to talk about what a cell is. Well, a cell is the basic unit of life. Some organisms can be made up of just one cell, like bacteria, which we talked about last week. And others are actually made up of trillions of cells. You and I are made up of cells too. We have lots of different types of cells in our body and each type of cell performs a different function so that our body works correctly. For example, we have nerve cells which transport messages around the body. We also have skin cells which help to create a barrier so things cannot get inside our body. We also have blood cells that make up our blood. There are many more cells in our body that all work together to help us to stay alive and thrive. Although there are lots of different kinds of cells, we often divide cells into two categories. There's prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are very simple and small, and they have no nucleus. Eukaryotic cells are typically a lot bigger and are more complex. They often have a nucleus, which has the cell's DNA inside of it. So specifically today, we're gonna to talk about eukaryotic cells found in animals in particular. But stay tuned for next week because we'll dive into plant cells next week. First, let's talk about the nucleus. The nucleus is found um, near the center of the cell and it acts as sort of the brain of the cell or the control center of the cell. It helps to regulate the cell's growth and reproduction. Most cells only have one nucleus because if they had more than one, it would get confusing if there were two control centers of a cell telling it to do two different things. One of the most important functions of the nucleus is to store the cell's DNA. This is the genetic information. This DNA is sort of like an instruction manual for what the cell's purpose is. DNA is an abbreviation that stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and it is organized into these structures that are called chromosomes and DNA is also responsible for genes that are passed down from your parents and your grandparents such as the color of your eyes the color of your skin or how tall you are now let's talk about the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that is inside of a cell and is composed mainly of water. It holds some solids that are called organelles within it and that perform specific functions. Essentially, it's a watery type gel that provides a structure for the cell parts so that they can move freely within the cell membrane. And we'll talk about the cell membrane in just a few minutes. Next up is the vacuoles. Vacuoles are another type of organelle that is found in a cell, and they're typically thought of as storage organelles, and they can carry food, molecules, or even wastes in the cytoplasm. 
In animal cells, vacuoles are generally pretty small and they more typically help to gather the waste products of the cell. There can be several small vacuoles in animal cells that help with the excretion of salts and water. In animal cells, it's important to note that they are temporary structures and are less significant than in plant cells. And I'll tell you why next week when we get to plant cells. Sometimes even, animal cells may not even have a vacuole. Let's move on and talk about mitochondria. This organelle is often referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. It generates energy from food that the rest of the cell can use. There are different types of cells, like I said before, and depending on the type of cell, there are different numbers of mitochondria in it. For example, simple cells probably only contain one or two mitochondria. However, animal cells need a lot more energy, like muscle cells. Muscles help us to move, and so they need thousands of mitochondria to produce the energy for us to move. Now, what kind of molecule is used for energy? This molecule is called ATP. The mitochondria take in the food molecules, which is in the form of carbohydrates, and combine them with oxygen, and it produces this ATP. When the cell requires more energy, these organelles, mitochondria, can reproduce. They can grow bigger and divide. If the cell needs less energy, some mitochondria can die or become inactive. Next up, we're going to talk about the cell membrane. The cell membrane surrounds the outside of the cell and it acts as a barrier between the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell. It allows useful substances to enter and blocks entry of things that may harm it. It also is useful in forcing out waste. So its main job is separating the cytoplasm and everything inside the cell from its surroundings, but also has some other important jobs. And last, we are gonna talk about the Golgi bodies. The Golgi bodies takes in protein and modifies it and then places it in shipping containers called vesicles and stores them for later use or can also send them out of the cell. Another thing that the Golgi apparatus does is it can make these organelles called lysosomes, which contain digestive enzymes. And that's all we have for today. I want you guys to go ahead and go through your daily worksheets with the information that you learned about the cell in this video. And in doing this, learn more about each of the organelles that are found within the cell. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.